I like the absolutely no foreknowledge of uh, what, where we're going. This no makes preparation. It That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, friends, welcome back to the Ransom Tar Podcast. John Eldridge, Greg McConnell here. And um, I read these things in my own personal uh, just reflection time, time with God, you know, evenings at home, whenever. And, and I find myself going, oh, I'd love to share that. And then I forget. So I've been trying to grab things I've been reading and bring them in. Mm. And um, this is from probably one of my favorite books of all time. So that just got our listeners' attention, I think. Uh-huh. It's called Diary of an Old Soul by George MacDonald, the old Scottish novelist, poet, pastor, preacher, theologian, friend of God. And on the cover is this quote by C.S. Lewis, I know hardly any other writer who seems closer or more continually close to the spirit of Christ himself hmm. than Lewis felt of George hmm. MacDonald. Diary of an Old Soul is a series of 365 readings written in kind of a poetic style through the year. And this one was back in May, but it so caught my attention, I wanted to bring it back here. Here's what he says. He says, Until we mourn, thou keep'st the merry tune. The hand unloved its pleasure must restrain, nor spoil both gift and child by lavishing too soon. Okay, so let me try this again. He's talking about why does God seem to withhold blessing or the timing of it sometimes seems so odd or, or the ways in which he gives or doesn't give it? And what's with all that? That's what he's wrestling with, okay? And um, he says, until we mourn, thou keepest the merry tune. You hold back the merry tune from us. The hand unloved, its pleasure must restrain nor spoil both gift and child by lavishing too soon. The idea being that until we love God more than we love the blessings that he gives, he's going to withhold many of those blessings Mm. because it would be wrong to give them. Mm. Um, And then the kind of the companion idea there is, or if you're not ready to receive a blessing for some other reason, a character defect, where you'll go with it, you'll make an idol of it, or those kind of things, you know, I don't want to spoil either the gift or the child by lavishing it too soon. Mm. Where do your thoughts go with that? Oh, a mix of thoughts. I am... I mean, the deepest parts of my being really, truly want God more than anything else. One of my favorite passages is Psalm seventy-three, twenty-five: Whom do I desire in heaven but thee? And besides thee, I desire nothing on earth. And every time I read that, I, I think that, long for that to be true. Mm. Um so there's a part of me that goes, yes, Lord, that's, uh, I want nothing but you. Mm. But I, I forget that and lose that and don't live there a lot. And I want the blessings, uh, irregardless of whether oh. <laughs> I'm uh, totally. close with God. I want, I want yeah. health. Mm-hmm. I want a great marriage. I want a great family. And it feels like those all would be quite enjoyable and sufficient, whether God was involved or not. Right. Right. That's the danger right mm-hmm. there. That. In fact, it make it easier to deal with a life without God, with all those things. It, it, who would need God? Yeah. When we've got this dilemma, friends, everybody shares it on the earth right now. We've got this dilemma that we were actually created for Eden. And there is within us this yearning for life to be good, mm-hmm. for life to be right. And it absolutely drives just about everything we do, uh, from the neighborhood we choose to live in, to the school we pick for our kids, to 
um, oh my goodness, you know, how we spend our money, what we watch on television, all of it, you know, just what we eat. Um, there is this tremendous driving force within us. I just want life to be good. And then unfortunately, what we also got as a result of the fall is without God, mm-hmm. with or without God, you know, yeah. that that there's a um, – we don't think, bottom line, that God alone is really enough. We don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and most people don't even think that God is a source of life. And mm-hmm. so the most merciful thing he can do is not let it work. Yes. Yes. And it's the most painful oh, yeah. thing on our end, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's just huge. It's huge. The Again, we were talking about eyes to see and, and ears to hear. You know, here's a category that helps us see. The category that the, the human being will make an idol out of anything mm-hmm. and especially out of good things. Make an idol out of family. Mm-hmm. You can make an idol out of church, mm-hmm. right? You can make an idol out of health. You can make mm-hmm. an idol out of, you know, mm-hmm. what people think of you. Your spirituality. All that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So God in his love goes, oh, I want to bless you, but I don't want to spoil the gift or the child by lavishing it too soon or when you're not ready for it. Mm-hmm. And the greatest thing we can do is, one, to desire God above all things. Yes. Love him, find our life in him above all things mm-hmm. so that the soul is – free to receive what he wants to give and then also to accept that process of of the growth, development, honing of our character so that he can give mm-hmm. gifts that he wants to give without it spoiling either the gift or the child, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, aren't you this way as a father? Yes. Yeah. Um, although, let me just say, I mean, as a father – one of the temptations is is not to withhold, and I mean the mistake we make is we. The common word would be spoil our children, right? And right. we know that yeah. is wrong. Yeah. Oh, and this is the hardest thing as a parent, by the way, is that <laughs> name one lesson, friends, that you have learned that's like a big life lesson, really, really shaped you that you did not learn through pain. Exactly. And yet, as a parent, what I want to do is spare yes. my kids Bingo. Ding. the pain that's necessary yeah. for the development of their character, the very thing they need to drive them to God. To Oh, my goodness. And the hand unloved, McDonald says, its pleasures must restrain. You know, that God says, I can't give you what I want to give you until you love me more. Mm-hmm. Until you love me more, love me first. And and the reasons are obvious because, man, you, you attach the ability of the human soul to form addictions, the ability of the human heart to form idols of worship. It's just staggering. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, we find something that feels like life. Oh, baby. Yeah. You know, it, it becomes our God. Yeah. It becomes the center of our focus, attention, compulsion, yeah. you know. Um, and so in love, God says, I can't give that to you. Yeah. yeah. Now, let me just offer a quick caveat because what makes um, spiritual advice <laughs> – counsel, direction, so difficult is that everyone's in such a different place in their life. You know, sometimes um, something else is operating. Um, You know, if Jesus says there's a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, then there's a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and and he's to blame for some of the unrealized hopes, dreams, desires in our life. He has to be. That's a category in Scripture. It has to be. Um, so I want to be careful that um, – because what ends up happening is actually the soul that's very tender to God tends to go very quickly to, oh, you're right. It's probably me. I 
I've set up an idol. That's why the Lord is withholding this when, in fact, in their case, it may just be warfare. It may right. be the enemy. It, right. may, it may be the sin of man. It may be the world. There are other reasons going on. Mm-hmm. You know, Daniel chapter 10. Oh, it's coming. It's just delayed. It's coming. God sent it the first day you prayed, but it's just delayed, you know, by the enemy. Ironically, then the, the person that – that uh, tends to write off those other categories and go, no, it's just God holding out on me. You know, well, there may be some good reasons there, you know, um, in terms of just character and stuff. So it's I want to be careful that what you did not hear us say is that every blessing withheld, God is withholding for your own good. Yes. We seek, we ask, we ask for interpretation, recognizing that the greatest thing we can do is um, love God. Uh, Mm -hmm. love him deeply um, so that he really is our truest love Mm -hmm. and source of life. And then we're the kind of person that he can trust with other things, Mm -hmm. you know, whether that be a a friend, a lover, a spouse, Mm -hmm. a child, a ministry, a company, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, these other things that we would love to have in our lives, um, blessing. Mm-hmm. I want to be the kind of person that can be in trust mm-hmm. with it because my heart's given over to God. That's good. That's good. Glad you've joined us. If this has stirred your heart, we've got a lot more to offer you at RansomedHeart.com. Check us out.